You there, welcome back. So, where we left off, we have our game here where uh, our player can walk around and uh, our camera is bounded to a specific room. And when we hit this trigger area, we have the camera smoothly snap to the next room, changing the camera barriers. Now, what I want to add today isn't something that's very essential, um, it's just something I like. I, uh, I really like The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, however, I also really like Dark Souls. One of the things I like about Dark Souls is that when you enter a new area, you'll get a, um, you'll get a, uh, a sound cue, and you'll also get a nice, neat um, pop-up of text for the place name. So we're going to add something similar to that to our game here. So, let's get started. All right, so first things first, um, I'm going to add a canvas to our scene. So just going to go to Create UI, Canvas, and I'm going to set this canvas up really quickly. I want it to be a screen space overlay, uh, but rather than having our UI be constant pixel size, I'm going to make this uh, scale with screen size. And since we're going for a 4 by 3 resolution, I'm going to leave my uh, reference resolution at, or resolution at 800 by 600. I'll leave it at match width and my reference pixels at 100. Uh, I'm going to add to this, so right click on the canvas, choose UI, choose text, and now I'm going to zoom way out and find where that text is. So I want to keep it pretty centered on the screen. Um, I'm going to change this from new text to be place name. Uh, I'm going to make it really big, let's say 50 for the size of our font, and you'll see it kind of disappeared there. Uh, I'm going to go to my resize tool, and I'm going to resize it until it takes up a pretty good chunk of the screen. And then I'm going to put it in the center here on both axes. I'm going to leave the anchors in the center. I'm going to go over here to my text, and I'm going to change it so it's centered um, left and right and up and down. I'm going to make the color a nice sharp black, and I'm also going to change the font. So I have this font that I'm going to include the link to in the description. It's called BitScript. Uh, it kind of looks like um, it looks like script, but it's still in like a pixel format, so it still goes pretty well with our game. So I'm going to change my font to that. All you have to do is just create a new font folder in your project. And sorry, I did that off camera. And then just drag in the .ttf file into that fonts folder. Once you have it in. Unity will be able to use it for any of the text in the project itself. So for my text here, I'm going to make sure that I have text highlighted. And then I'm going to go over and where it says font, I'm just going to use the little circle selector and double click bit script. And see that kind of look to it? I think that looks kind of nice. I'm going to make an outline for this as well. So I'm going to add a component. And if you don't already have it typed in, you can just type in outline, or O-U-T. Um, my color for this, I'm going to make it a little transparent and a little gray. Not a lot gray, just a little. And I'm going to make the effect distance, we'll go 2 and negative 2. And there we go. Um, I'm going to flip over to my game view just to see how this looks. Uh, it's not great. Let's make it a little crisper. Let's make it fully opaque and white. Maybe a little less, a little more transparent. Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. So I'm gonna rename this item. I'm gonna call it my, um, what do they call those? Place cards? I don't know, we'll call it place text. And then, uh, by default, I'm going to have this be an inactive object so that I cannot see it by default. Now, what I want to trigger that room card or that place text coming up is moving into a new area. So, it makes the most sense for me to be putting all of my code for this inside of my script that moves us from one area to the other. So I'm going to go to my scripts and I'm going to open up the remove script. Now in here, um, I'm going to have to make some references to the UI system, so I'm going to add a new using tag. So using, it's up here, unityengine.ui, and that's going to allow us to access the text object and change its text. Now, 
not every room I enter is probably going to need a new um, showing of what the place name is. You might want to have your rooms grouped together so that like these rooms make the swamp, these rooms make the forest, and not every single room needs to say where you are. So in order to differentiate between ones that do and ones that don't, I'm going to create a little boolean here. This is going to be a public bool and we'll call it need text. Next, I'm going to create a string of what that text would be if we need it. So this is going to be a public string, and we'll call this place name. Next, I'm going to create a reference to the actual card itself, the object, not the text on the object, but the object itself. So this is going to be a public game object, and this is going to be uh, text. And then I'm now going to create a reference to the, the text on that object. So this is a public text place text. All right, cool. So what I want to do is when we're changing from one area to another, which we're doing down here in this on trigger enter, I want to check to see if we need text. And if we need text, then I'm going to make the text object active and then make its text um, Part of it be equal to our place name string and then after a short delay I'll have it go away so um, what I'm gonna do here is in my on trigger enter 2d once we're changing everything I'm gonna say if need text so if we need the text then I'm going to trigger another little method and this is actually gonna be a coroutine because I want it to stay on screen for a certain amount of time and then go away so to make the coroutine, outside of my on trigger enter 2D, I'm going to make another method. I'm going to call this a private I enumerator. An I enumerator is just it's a method that can run in parallel to other processes, and it allows you to have a specified wait time. So I'm going to call this um, place name co for place name coroutine. Okay, sorry about that cut. So uh, place name co. And uh, I'm just going to kind of run through my logic here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set that object active. And so I called the object text, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to do active true. So that makes it object or it makes it active. And then I'm going to uh, change the text part of it. So I named the text place text. So we're going to say place text and we want to access the text part of it so dot text is equal to place name and then we want to wait a small amount of time so I'm going to say yield return new wait for seconds and I'm going to wait four seconds and then after four seconds I'm just going to turn that uh, text inactive text dot set active false Okay, so now I just need to call that coroutine if text is needed. So if need text, I'm going to start, it would help if I could type, start coroutine, uh, place name co. All right, cool. And there we go. I'm going to save my script. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. And now I'm going to take a look at my uh, room traversal daily bobbers. So first I have room transfer. Um, oh, I need to move this over. Um, once everything compiles, there we go. So we're going to move that over and then I'm probably going to need to move the other one over too. Yep. All right, cool. So my room transfer, which takes me from my starting room up here to this little pond, uh, I'm going to say that this doesn't need text and so this doesn't have uh, a place name, but to make sure I don't have any weird errors, I'm going to still tell it what the text is and what the object is. So I'm still going to assign those. Now in my room transfer one, I'm going to say that this one does need text. So I'll turn that on. And this is going from here by the pond down to here where the house is. So I'm going to call this the homestead because this is the title of the room that we're going to. Um, and again, I'm going to assign the text 
and the place text. Okay, cool. So let's give this a try. I'm going to hit play. Um, doo -doo -doo. Cool. So I'm going to walk up, and when we go to the pond, we shouldn't see any text. There we go. But when we go back down to the house, we should see a nice little title card pop up. Haha. <laughs> uh, my name is too long, or my font is too big. So let's adjust that. Now I could make it best fit, and it should fix all of this, but rather than do best fit, I'm just going to make it smaller, say 30. Um, best fit uses some memory because it's constantly calculating how big the font should be. So we're going to go up, no title card, down, title card. That's maybe too small, but yeah, it's kind of nice of effect. You could animate that so that instead of just disappearing, you could fade out, and you could also wire that up to play a sound, just like Dark Souls does. So, yeah, I um, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. I haven't been chatting every day because it's back to school for me, so uh, I will start chatting again in there more, more regularly. So, have yourselves a wonderful day.